Great to be catching up again with editor at large for CanStar, Effie Zahos. How are you, Effie? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, it's a bit of a rocky time for borrowers, but particularly so for first home buyers. You've got some new research that shows just how hard it is to get your first home. Yeah, look, CanStar did some uh, analysis and, and uh, surveys and got a, a huge number of people and looking at what's happening, what they're, what they're feeling. And look, while some of the results were no surprise, I mean, nine in 10 first home buyers are stressed about saving a deposit. Oh, you know, you would think that would be the case. But there were some interesting findings when we uh, dig a little bit deeper. Uh, even in this time, uh, when I mean by that, it's like the cost of living and pressures and so on, two-thirds were saving about $1,400 per month. That's about $350 per week. That's a lot of money considering, you know, the, the rental crisis we're experiencing. So, you know, if they're not living at home and they've got to pay rent, that's a lot to fork out per week. And when you also look about look at, uh, um, around the uh, cost of groceries, that's gone up as well. So first home buyers are doing it tough, and you know there's, there's no you know there's a great understanding why nine in ten are feeling stressed. Yeah, when we uh, talked about this one earlier this morning on breakfast, uh, what Kenstar mm. was putting out there about how hard it was to save for a deposit, like you say, that's a huge amount of summer saving. There's a whole lot of information there that uh, I suddenly realised I'm probably not engaged with a lot of what young people are facing in terms of um, after pay and online shopping accounts and streaming services they subscribe to. There's a lot of sacrifice they're having to go, go without to actually make those savings possible. There is, and I imagine they've made a lot of sacrifices as well already. The last two years have been hard on everybody's household budget. And when you look at the, 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 the figures just straight up and down, if you look at what the um, the medium house price is, I mean, CoreLogic came out with their latest figures. Yes, house prices are falling, but you've got to remember interest rates are going up as well. So it kind of um, offset any gain of reducing, you know, seeing reductions in prices. And if you want to save that typical 20%, deposit um, on the medium house um, and, and looking at what the average annual income is, I mean, I don't mean to, to scare first-time buyers. Um, it, it doesn't look good if I'm just going up and down, straight up and down the line there. It would take, you know, for someone who wants to buy a place, you know, on a single income, uh, 12 years to get that Whoa. deposit. Yep. That's a lot. But look, can I just say and give some hope here? We're talking about averages here. First-time buyers probably are not going to be buying the, the medium house price in their state or territory. Mm. They're going to be buying entry-level property prices, and they're probably going to be buying a unit over a home. And those numbers change considerably then. I know I did an analysis uh, for, for CanStar with hot spotting on um, rising stars and showed these properties exactly for first-time buyers on entry level. And, and this is the thing first-time buyers are going to do. They've got to kind of probably lower their expectations just to get into the property market. Yeah, we've seen in regional Australia as well a property boom that's sort of gone off the back of once the properties went up in Sydney and Melbourne, mm. for instance. Regional mm. prices, in fact, uh, whilst the metro ones are going down, some regionals are still going up. But that has been a destination for some aspiring first home buyers is to get their first property if they can secure work in a regional location. Yeah, absolutely has, and that has fueled the, the uh, price rise in regional areas. It was interesting to note even CoreLogic's latest data that just came out did show for the first uh, time in actually, what, two years, regional prices went uh, a little bit backwards. So they're, they're feeling the pinch a little bit too, um, not as much, obviously, as Sydney and, and Melbourne. But, yeah, people were going to regional areas, obviously, because of affordability and because the flexibility in work arrangements um, you know, quite happy and willing to, to, to move out further and enjoy all the benefits of what regional Australia has to offer. So first home buyers, traditionally, for some time, they've gone and tapped mum and dad on the shoulder. The bank of mum and dad, is that still open for business? <laughs> Well, I am a bank of mum and dad, and let me tell you, I've shut shop for a little while. Um, and that's what the uh, results actually said here as well, about 79% are saying that, you know what, I don't think I'm going to get much love out of the bank of mum and dad. They think it's closed. Um, and they are looking at other alternatives. And so let me just break that down. What parents are no doubt are seeing is that uh, at the end of this financial year, a, a lot of super funds, actually the majority of balanced super funds, which most of these are sitting in, returned a negative growth for that period. So for the last 
last 12 months to the end of the financial year, people have seen their super money go backwards. It's going to be a, a tough period even in this financial year because what happens when interest rates go up, and we know they have, that makes it a lot harder for super funds to find value um, and it becomes more expensive for the business to operate and what they're investing in. It, it is a lot trickier to get those double-digit returns in super funds as ever we've seen in the past. And also for the same reasons that young people are feeling it, mums and dads, the cost of living, the pressure on their own nest eggs, there's concern there, sentiment is down. So it's a case of, well, hold it, maybe I need to shut the shop here, um, look after my affairs here first before I then help you know, the, the kids. Um, fortunately for first-time buyers, there is quite a few schemes that are out already or about to launch. So under the Albanese government, of course, we saw that 40,000 spot for first-time buyers, um, the first-time buyer schemes, whether it's a 5% deposit or 2% deposit. And also in January, they'll have that shared equity scheme. That's where you can buy property with the government instead of, say, mum and dad. Yeah, that's right. So uh, mum and dad indirectly as taxpayers probably help in that respect through the federal mm-hmm. government. So that's something helpful, but something that's been challenging, as you've mentioned, is interest rate rises. We talked prior to the Reserve Bank meeting about the likely, and it was, a half a percentage point rise. Where are things going to go from here in your expectation towards the end of the year? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah you, you're right. The actual interest rate was expected to be 0.5. I mean, had those inflation numbers come in even higher, because they were a little bit under than what um, most of the economists were predicting, we could have very well likely seen an actual increase of, say, 0.75. We didn't. Um, now, most of the banks now have been pretty fast in passing that on. I mean, definitely the four majors have all jumped on board. Um, interesting to note, I mean, that push from the Treasurer as to why does it take so long to increase rates on uh, saving accounts, but, you know, it comes out to very fast for home loans. A lot of banks have now jumped on that and it started to increase rates. But again, they're very strategic in where they're putting those interest rates. What I found interesting was that the Commonwealth Bank came out and actually cut its uh, four-year fixed rate. Um, Mm. It cut it to the lowest four-year fixed rate, 4.99. It dropped by 1.6%. So there's a couple of things that, that interest me in that. The reason I suggest, uh, I suspect why they actually reduced that four-year fixed rate is that a whole lot of home loans are about to roll off on fixed rates. And I guess they may want to sweep some of this business up, uh, make it attractive, get some customers locked in again. And the other question I would be asking is, what does that say about long-term interest rates? If long-term fixed rates are falling, could there be a possibility that what they're pricing in is that rates will do a turnaround? We know some economists are saying that the RBA may contract their rate rises in 2024. So, you know, this is the, the fine balance that the RBA is in. They're trying to increase interest rates. They're being really aggressive um, to reduce inflation. And they've got to be careful that they don't overshoot those interest rate hikes because it can lead them to a real shrinking of the economy. And, and that could be disastrous if they overshoot those interest rates. So fascinating to think that a uh, Reserve Bank that was saying that uh, we might not see rate rises mm-hmm. until 2024, well, not like long ago, now there's a possibility of you f- foreshadowing some economists are saying we could be going back down again around that Just time. Goes to show, it goes to show that no one really can, can predict what's happening and, and this is what it is, it's a lot of predictions. But unfortunately, you're right. I mean, when the RBA came out and said, hey, we predict that rates will not move in 2024, a lot of people did take that and it, it was pitched in the sense that, yeah, no worries, we won't see rate hikes to 2024. A lot of people ran out and got themselves to the home loans when prices of homes were at their peak. Yeah, absolutely. It's a wild ride, that's for sure, Effie, and we'll keep riding it. Great chatting with you. And where can people make comparisons for themselves with Kenstar if they want to look into things further. Yeah, you can keep track of all the rate movements and how's your, how yours compares at uh, kenstar.com.au. And an important footnote to that interview, it is for information purposes only and if you are looking to make a financial decision, please seek qualified financial advice.